After his victory, you can see why the Duke deserved his palace, but you can also see why other people would be jealous and make accusations of favoritism. Anne herself was very well aware of this danger. She said, I mustn't put myself in the hands of any one party. But the real problem wasn't Anne's preference for a political party or a male favorite. The problem was her relationship with a woman, the Duke's wife, Sarah. This is Sarah, the Duchess of Marlborough, surrounded by all of her children. She was notoriously powerful at the court of Queen Anne. Sarah held all the top jobs. She was mistress of the robes. She was keeper of the privy purse. In portraits, you sometimes see her with her golden key of office. This key unlocked the Queen's private rooms. It was like the key to the Queen herself. Because of her access, Sarah was a powerful friend to her political allies, the Whigs. But she was dangerous if you crossed her. And some people thought there was something unhealthy about her relationship with the Queen. So these are early 18th century playing cards with scenes from life at court. They're like little windows into the palace. They're rather good, aren't they? And this one shows Queen Anne in private with all of her attendants. These are the ladies of the bedchamber. Now, queens had always had ladies of the bedchamber, but Sarah is so prominent amongst them that this causes problems, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, she was far more than a servant. They were very close friends by this point. What's unusual about this level of intimacy between a queen and a subject? Well, I think what they started to do that was unusual was to talk to each other as if they were equals. And, uh, you know, as we can see from letters like this that Anne, this is one from Anne to Sarah, they decided to take on names in their correspondence of Mrs. Morley and Mrs. Freeman. So Anne writes in the persona of Mrs. Morley and she calls Sarah Mrs. Freeman. And, you know, they're young women at this point who are casting themselves as if they are just ordinary bourgeois middle-class housewives talking to each other. This seems to me quite dangerous, really, because even though contemporary friendship was framed as two women as equals, this is the queen and her servant. Yeah, and by the time Anne's uh, queen, it's a very subversive and dangerous relationship in the eyes of many people. Why were the male courtiers and politicians so frightened of Sarah? They believed that she had much more direct political influence than, in fact, she had. She is seen as the Whigs' agent trying to constrain the Queen and make her do what the Whigs want. But what's interesting is that it's Sarah herself who starts to drop hints when she feels threatened that other women are later going to usurp her position and come into that role, that she starts to say that Anne's relationships with women are unnatural. So Sarah herself is, is using this sort of scurrilous language about lesbianism as a way of attacking Anne. She's saying, unless you keep me as your favourite, I will reveal all. Yeah, she, she keeps all of Anne's letters and she refers to them as her vouchers of truth. And from uh, about 1708, she starts making veiled threats that if she's not kept in favour, she will publish these letters. In the end, Sarah's threats and the growing public disquiet became dangerous for Anne. In 1710, the writer Jonathan Swift published an article accusing the Marlboroughs of embezzling funds intended for Blenheim Palace. Anne finally had to banish her favourite from court 